Okay, so we're going to look at improper and mixed fractions, and um, I'm going to start here with just the concept of what a whole is again, because it will help us understand what's going on with these. So if I think about a whole orange, that's a whole orange, and if I were to cut it into pieces, I could chop it up into quarters, for instance four quarters. And those four quarters we could put back together again to go back to the whole. So in a sense what I'm getting at here is that one whole orange is equal to four quarters of an orange. So I can represent a whole as an actual fraction. One is equal to four over four and that's a fraction. And remember Fractions are just divide, and 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. So, when you see 4 over 4, you should be thinking, oh, that's a whole thing, that's all 4 pieces of the 4 that I cut it up into. So, if we look at this again, and click on our orange, let's this time look at two whole oranges. So we'll think about what happens when I have two whole oranges and now I cut them into quarters. So the first orange into four pieces, and the second orange also into four pieces. Stack them up here. So if I count these guys up, two whole oranges is equal to how many quarters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so I could write that as 8 pieces of quarters of orange, basically. So one whole is worth 4 quarters. 4 over 4 gets me to 1. And two wholes are equal to 8 quarters, or 8 over 4. And again, 8 divided by 4 gets you to 2. So this is kind of logical in a way. But then, what would happen if I actually ate one of those pieces? Or maybe two of those pieces? So what happens if I take off a quarter and eat it? Then what's left? Well, I've only now got a quarter of my orange missing that's been eaten. And I now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 quarters. So now I'm at 7 quarters. And that's equal to how many oranges if we think of them more as holes? Well, there's one whole orange still. And how many... How, what kind of part is left of that orange that I've eaten one of the quarters out of? If you imagine, you might see that there's the four quarters inside of it, and one of them I've eaten. So there's really three quarters left. So that's an improper fraction. I can say that one whole and three quarters of the whole is equal to seven quarters. So I can think of it, again, trying to count it up in terms of holes and then what's left over, or think about counting it up as individual little tiny quarters each time. So these are examples of our mixed fractions and our improper fractions. And what I want to talk about is this idea of what proper fractions are, and then um, look at improper and mixed fractions as well. So a proper fraction is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator, and if that's confusing, that literally means the top is smaller than the bottom number, where this would be the numerator of the top, and that would be the denominator of the bottom. So examples of proper fractions would be like 4 over 15 or 1 over 2, where the top number, the numerator, is smaller than the bottom number. And they're considered proper in a way because they're, you know, we often think of fractions as, as part of something or part of a whole, and those are all less than a whole. That's only 4 of the 15 pieces, and that's only 1 of the 2 pieces. So improper fractions are when the numerator, or the top, is larger than the denominator, or what we call the bottom. So an example of this would be like what we've just done, 7 fourths, 
or maybe something like eight fifths or 124 thirds. So these are improper because they are bigger on top, bigger numerator than denominator, and what that means is that wrapped up inside of there is really some holes. Like we see here, seven quarters is actually a whole orange and three quarters of another one. So it's mixing up whole numbers and fractions and kind of hiding it as a fraction. So mixed fractions are when you have the whole number and the proper fraction. So the example from above would be three, sorry, one and three quarters. You could have another number like mm -hmm, 15 and one fifth or two and three eighths. So what I've got here is two holes and then three of eight pieces left over um, when I cut up the object into eighths. And if we were going to maybe look at that one, just to get another example, that would be two holes and then another object cut into eighths and we only have three of them. So we have one hole and two holes and then we just have three of the possible eights. So that's what two and three eights represents. So what we need to do with these mathematically is be able to convert between improper and mixed fractions. So if we're looking to go from improper to mixed, we're trying to figure out how many holes are hidden inside of there. So remembering that whole is when you see something like five over five or four over four, same number divided by itself. So how many fives are actually in 12 all up? You could think about 12 being equal to 5 plus 5 plus 2. So there's two fives and then two left over. So we would say 2 and 2 fifths. So two wholes and two fifths. And another way to do that is to divide the numerator by the denominator. So that means divide the top number by the bottom number. 12 divided by 5 goes in twice whole. And then there's two left over, and that goes onto the top of the fraction. So two whole and the two remainder on top of the fraction. Looking at the next example, again, you could try to visualize how many fours are actually inside of 23. Well, I could have four, 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 five of them, and that gets me up to 20. So I know I've got five holes inside of there and then I need another 3 to get me back to 23, so that's 3 fourths. So here we're taking an improper number, pulling out the holes, and leaving the fraction behind. So when you think about it, we're pulling out 4 quarters, 4 quarters, 4 quarters, 4 quarters, and another 4 quarters, and then we're left over with 3 quarters. In this one we've picked out, oh, that's not where I want to write it, we've pulled out five-fifths, another five-fifths, and then we've got two-fifths left over. To go the other way, from mixed to improper, you're going to times the whole number by the denominator or the bottom number, and then add it back to the numerator. So, times in from top to the bottom, five times four gets me twenty, plus two, so here we're times in between those two, gets me to 20, and then I'm adding 2, gets me to 22 fifths. So that's 5 times 4 plus 2 gets me to 22, and the bottom stays the same. So I can hide those, fi those 4 holes back inside if I put in all those fifths, and I get 22 fifths. Looking at the next example, I only have one hole, so I times 7 and 1 to get 7, and then I add 4, and that gets me to 11. So 1 and 4 sevenths is the same as 11 sevenths. So inside of there I've got 7 sevenths, and then 4 more sevenths. So that's how you go about converting between the improper and mixed numbers. Um, you can get onto the exercises, or if you want one more example, I'll do one more example of each. So let's take a look at converting um, 17 fourths into an actual mixed number. So here again it's improper because the bigger number is on top. So I'm going to think to myself, how many fours fit into 17 whole? 
And I can imagine that as 17 divided by 4, well, I can get 16 of them in there, because 16 and divided by 4 gets me 4. So, I've got the 4, and then that needs one more to get up to the 17. So 1 over 4. So again, 17 divided by 4 goes in about 4 times, and I need one more to get me to 4. So, there's that example, going the other way. 2 and 3 ninths, going in the other direction. 2 times 9 gets me to 18, and then I need to add the 3, and that takes me to 21 ninths. So 2 and 3 ninths is the same as 21 ninths. Because 21 has 2 sets of 9 in it, and then I need 3 more, because 2 sets of 9 only takes me to 18, and I need 3 more to get to 21. So give a go practicing a bunch of those and see how you go.